There's a set of technical concerns to build a posable doll from the model sheet of your character, but that technical work is the price that we're going to pay for an all-occasions rig that you can pose and use in your animation production. Let's get started. The recipe that we're going to want to use to create a multi-view rig is going to rise up out of the model sheet for your character. And taking it to the next stage isn't going to mean creating hundreds of symbols. It means creating only 16 or 19 or however many elements there are in your character. Because all of the parts of your character will be contained in those symbols. Now there is a set of technical concerns to collect all of those pieces of the character into those symbols. But that technical work is the price we're going to pay for an all occasions rig that allows you to take that model sheet and collapse all that art into a versatile doll that you can pose and use in your animation production. I am so excited to talk about a project that's been in the works for a few months now. I've been a little quiet and it's been a little crazy, but in this video, we're going to talk about multi-angle rigs, also known as multi-view rigs. If there's enough interest in the discussion, I may go ahead and do a full tutorial or a live demonstration, so please let me know. What's the difference between a 360 degree rig and a multi-view rig? A 360 degree rig would be something that you would see in 3D software where you can literally turn the character by a single degree or even a fraction of a degree to see every side of the character. In Animate CC, we're gonna be snapping the view of the character by 45 degree increments to see the front, three quarter front, side, three quarter rear, and rear. And we're gonna flip three of those poses and then get back around to the front view. So why did I do this project? I really wanted to challenge myself with an advanced rigging project. And I also wanted to explore the outer limits of puppet animation in Animate CC with the Electric Dog plugin. I also wanted to do my best to create the ultimate posable all occasions rig. I mentioned the all occasions rig because there are some setups out there that are so beautiful and so amazing. A lot of the VTuber stuff, the live 2D stuff, absolutely stunning. However, it's observable that the most you can get out of those rigs is a really cool loop or something that's kind of mapped to your webcam and serves as an avatar. No knock on that stuff, it's absolutely mesmerizing. But the use case for those types of rigs is very specific. And what I'm after is, again, that all occasions rig, a model or a doll that I can take, I can make it dance, I can make it walk, and I can perform action and subtle acting. This isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial, so why am I doing this? It's mainly to share my learnings and my mistakes. My first multi-view rig project took me an insane amount of time. I shouldn't say that. It took me a lot of time. I don't want to discourage you or scare you away but it was a lot of work. And a lot of that was because I was figuring things out as I was going along. One of the biggest mistakes that I made while building my multi-view rig was trying to build into her a bunch of four shortened elements. Oh my goodness. I was sure that I was gonna want all sorts of art that was coming out of the viewer or shrinking in the distance and perspective in a dynamic and interesting way. However, once I got to that point in the rigging, it didn't make any sense to include that in a standard multi-view rig because of practical and technical limits. But I learned another valuable insight in trying to do that. When you're designing your rig, it's critical to have in mind the things that you want your character to do and the things that you don't want your character to do. At the end of the day, no matter how amazing your rig is, there are gonna be certain things that require a mix of animation approaches and styles. There's gonna be things that your puppet does so easy and it's gonna be so awesome. Oh, that didn't take long, cool. And there are going to be things that your puppet just can't do. I'm sharing this because when I was building out my multi-view rig, I didn't see all that. I'm seeing all the technical concerns in hindsight now because, well, the project's already done. One of the things that I love about Animate CC is that I can freely mix animation styles. I can set keyframes using traditional methods using hand-drawn artwork, and I can set keyframes by posing my puppet within the same symbol or even the same layer if I want. And as I mentioned, for certain animation sequences, I'm actually gonna be back to animating with a mix of smart magnet rigs and open rigs. I know, right? What feels like a long time ago, it was only a year or two ago now, 
I was starting on a project and I was going to commit to building out this character as an open rig. But when I discovered Electric Dog's Flash Power Tools plugin, I thought I'd never look back at the idea of animating with an open rig. However, while building out my multi-view project, I discovered that certain shots and actions are actually going to need to be animated by using an open rig or a mix of Tradigital and Puppet animation methods. I'm totally still going to use my puppet, but what we start to see now is a sharp line between the things that a rig can do easily and well and the things that it can't. That doesn't mean that those actions can't be animated, it just means that certain things need to be planned out and created specifically for that shot or occasion. I know I talk about an all occasions rig, but that's somewhat relative. Basically, a multi-view rig will allow you to do many, many different types of animation, but not everything that you want to do. So with that said, is a multi-angle rig worth it? I'd like to recommend a recipe for a standard multi-view rig. And there are details and features that an all occasion rig needs. And you don't want to add more than what's in this basic recipe. But at the same time, if you don't do what is in the recipe, you're going to fall short of having a rig that can do a lot of really cool things. What I'd like to do now is take you through the main eight steps of creating your own multi-view rig project. So once you have a vectorized version of the model sheet of the character in Adobe Animate, what we're going to do is copy each element or body part to its own layer. Next, we're going to create a symbol from each of those elements. Now we're going to move the pivot points to the joints. The next step is to select all of those symbols and to use the Make Adaptable operation. Next, we're going to rig the character using the Freestyle Rigging tool. And now we're going to copy the artwork horizontally across the frames and vertically across the layers. Where now we're going to move the artwork into the 15 symbols, but we're going to do it intelligently by using the Copy and Paste Frames command. Once that's done, we will need to position and line up the locus or where that art is going to rotate with the center marker. All right, and the last step is to adjust the magnet targets on each frame where the view changes. This is critical because when the rig is created, each symbol is assigned to its very own magnet target. If you're interested in a longer demonstration, I will post a video of my rigging session. It'll be all the work that I did to go from model sheet to fully rigged character.